Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vin PF, and on today's episode, we've got the Smokehead High Voltage. Now, as you might know, I mean, this is amongst my uh, kind of advent calendar content, but this is my a normal Thursday review. So we'll talk a, a little bit more in depth about different things going on. But as you might notice, this is my first proper review in the new studio in my new house. So there might be some different things going on. There might be some sound issues, whatnot. Uh, let me know in the comments below if there's anything that's um, kind of put you off too much and uh, I'll see what I can change. But the idea is that um, I'm just, I've just gone straight in with it. You know, as you can see, the uh, the shelf has not been sorted out at all. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna keep this shelf. Uh, I've tried to retain a few th little things like the shelf, the plant, and um, my desk down here, but it's gonna be a slow evolution while I actually build out a proper studio over the next kind of year or so, I guess. There's no rush, basically, is what I'm saying with that. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you'll join me in this kind of new chapter in No Nonsense Whiskey. Not much will change. Uh, it's still going to be the same old me um, while I kind of review whiskies like this. Uh, and of course, if you've been following the Advent Calendar content, that's all going to stop on Christmas Day. I'm going to be back to normal one-a-week contents going forwards. That said... Let's get into the actual uh, Smokehead High Voltage and see what we've got. Uh, this one here, I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful looking bottle. It's got that kind of like that smoky glass to it. So we can't really see what color it is. I mean, you can see the a, maybe a slight difference in it there. Not too much difference. But this is a, an Ian McClure Distillers bottling and it's a, a single malt Scotch whiskey from Isla. Uh, this one here is the high voltage version. The standard Smokehead is one that I really like. Um, I, can't remember if I've covered it on the channel or not yet. I th I've, I've never owned a bottle myself, so I think I probably if I did cover it, it was a sample or something. But in any case, I should re-review it. This one here is the kind of, um, it's not quite cask strength, but it's like a higher strength version of it. The uh, distillery them itself is a bit of a secret, although uh, it, you know it's debatable um, which Isla distillery it's going to be. And we can talk about that for a, a good length of time. But most people, if, uh, something I always say is if you were a betting person that uh, you know, good odds would be on it being Kalila. It could be some others, but um, it's unlikely. Kalila are really the ones that tend to push themselves out to independent bottlings more and more, and independent bottlings go into them because they have the stock available and they don't have many in their own core range to, uh, to really take that stock away from the open market. So yeah, they've got casks out there ready to go. Um, the thing that makes this differ from the standard smokehead is the ABV, which is 58%, which is obviously very high. So, um, you know, they say in the kind of the marketing on this that it's obviously kind of very intense and explosive. There's a big word, explosive there. Um, I actually got this bottle. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the origins of it. Uh, I paid something like 45 quid for it. It was part of the really good whiskey company Flood Damage. Uh, what did they call it? It was like a raffle kind of lucky dip, I guess is the way that they called it. And the idea behind that was that you they had a bunch of stock that the tubes were ruined or something part of it was not quite able to sell it. But if you paid them 45 quid or 50 quid or something, there was, there was a bit of a lottery. There was quite a lot of whiskies that were 45 pounds. So you would kind of technically be losing a fiver, but there were some in there that were worth 1300, 250 quid. It did turn out that there was quite a lot of Glen Turrets went out. Um, I know a lot of people in the community picked up a Glen Turret. I was fortunate. I mean, I would have still covered the Glen Turret and been happy about it, but I was fortunate and I got this. Uh, and this sells for about £55 in the UK, sometimes a bit higher depending on where you look, sometimes a bit lower on a kind of Black Friday deal or whatnot. Um, really, before I get into the actual review itself, it's important to say that if you've tried the standard Smokehead, then you're probably going to be interested in this. Um, but if you haven't tried the standard Smokehead, and you haven't tried this, and you're trying to decide which one to get, for my money, standard one all the way as your first outing. See if you like it, and then move on to this. Let's get into the actual whiskey and see what we've got in terms of tasting notes, shall we? Um, I'm not sure about added colour or anything on this. Obviously, it's a no-age statement, but um, you know, let's just go with it and uh, see what we've got. Obviously, 58, 58%, so let's be careful with the old nose on this. Now, actually, the nose is really lovely. It's um, it's not as peaty or as smoky as you might expect it to be um, when they talk about how intense it is. 
I'm pretty sure this has got some sherry influence to it. I mean, look, I, I don't know. Again, I don't know if it's added colour or not, but um, yeah, it's pretty dark. But you're getting some kind of dried fruits on there as well. There is obviously smoke and peat to it, but it's just not massive and kind of impactful, in my opinion. Very nice nose, very nice nose. Let's try on the palette. Mm -hmm. oh. oh man, I mean, it's definitely an assault on the senses, that's for sure. Um, I mean, I like high ABV whiskey. I like heavily peated whiskey. Put the two together, should be an epic marriage, right? But I mean, for me, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's very tasty. It's um quite kind of um ashy and charry in places, like a like a real deep charred wood has been involved in this. Kind of um bags of like brininess as well. Hard to pin down. It might it might well not be Kalila. Who knows? Um now, here's a controversial opinion, and I, I impress on you that it is an opinion. I think it's a little bit much. Which is something that genuinely surprised me. And I mean, you can see how much of this I've drank. It's it's not a bad whiskey by any way, shape or form. I'm definitely going to enjoy it. But it's taken me this long to figure out what it is about it that I'm not sure about. And I think it's the ABV. Genuinely, I think it's the ABV. I think it's just a little bit too high for this whiskey. I mean, I've got 58% whiskeys of my own. I've got three releases now that are above 58%. I, you know, I enjoy 58%. I think it's a good, you know, higher ABV. I really like that sort of thing. I just think in this case, in this particular whiskey, the ABV is not to its detriment per se, but I think it is holding it back a little bit. There's some flavours underneath there that could come out to the surface if the ABV wasn't really ripping through your taste buds. I'm going to have another little quick sip and see if we can pull some good tasting notes out of it. Hmm. Now, I have to say, I mean, on top of the ones that I've given already, there isn't much else, you know. Those initial flavours tend to disappear really quickly. And what you're left then with with that ABV tingle, with some kind of black pepperiness and some smoke. The smoke comes out and out and out into, into the finish, but it's um, it's a difficult dram to drink. And that's the fact of the matter, you know. I mean, there's some peat out there that I really love that's really easy to drink. Not as easy as a non-peated, for sure, but, um, yeah, for me... It's just, not, it's just not quite there. Um, and I think, I mean, I definitely prefer the original Smokehead and that's what I would recommend to you if you're looking at getting this or Tother um, is is get the get the original Smokehead, which is a really lovely dram. It's nicely well-rounded. It's um, well put together, well presented. Can't remember the ABV on it. It's going to be something like 46%, I imagine. And it's, um, a, you know, a, a good touch cheaper than this one as well. You know that said, if, go for it. If you've been if you've been really thinking about this one and I'm in an R in, don't let me put you off. Um, it, this is just my personal opinion that's come out here. I don't often give my personal opinion. I try to give a kind of more professional overview on it. But on this occasion, I can't ignore it. I can't ignore that. I think something is n not perfect with it. You know, if I if I was a scoring man and I'm not, if I was a scoring man, this would be in those kind of like high 60s low 70s kind of vibes you know a great whiskey very drinkable but needs something else doing to it to really push it up into those 80s and 90s there you go uh good smattering of personal opinion on that one so if you have tried this one before i want to hear from you in the comments what you think of it um, because this again just me just my opinion there are other people out there Make sure you go and check out other videos as well if you if you don't agree with what I've said. But let me know in the comments below if you've tried this, if you prefer this one versus the original Smokehead or vice versa like me. I want to hear from you. In any case, that's my review of the Smokehead High Voltage. I'll catch you again next week for another review. Uh, of course, the Whiskey Advent Calendar content is coming to a close now. But um, I'm going to be uh, reviewing more whiskies uh, as best I can throughout the new year and of course keeping up with my whiskey of the month and soon the whiskey of the year uh, as well as my kind of whiskey and whiskey out content and then hopefully when uh, things ease up a bit I'll be able to get out and about and we'll be able to do some more in interesting stuff. In any case thanks for watching this uh, probably lengthier video than usual but I'm going to drink the rest of this um, glass not the bottle that bottle's probably going to last me a while I have to say 
Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again on more No Nonsense Whiskey videos.